my next guest. My next guest tonight stars in the most talked about film in the country, The Blair Witch Project. He is on the current cover of uh, Newsweek that's out this week. And uh, let's take a look at a clip from that film. It's necessary to look at the map now, even though I know where we're going and we're going straight ahead up there. If you've known where we're going, we wouldn't be hiking like... We're in the middle of How the woods. Could you some of it off? is, some of it is off-trail hiking. Because people told you, oh yeah, there's a cemetery back in there. We're I don't. lost, admit that first. Because we're uh, no, I know we're not lost. Oh, you knew that yesterday too, and you knew that twice Look, today. Look, no, and I and we have not been lost at all today. That's, not once. Not, I know where we're going. Okay, this is where that we is, were. Let me tell you what you said to us. It's like two miles away. Then it's like okay, two just, hours just away, chill, three hours chill. away. Maybe it's four hours away. How? How could you... Did you I agree to do this I, project? I, I did. I agreed to a scouted out project. Please welcome Michael C. Williams. Thank you very much for coming. I'm really happy to be here. Yeah, congratulations. I thought to make you more at home during the interview that I would shoot you with one of these things right here. Get that damn thing off me! Get it back! It's all my fault. Um, <laughs> was my idea to have a talk show? I said we should do the Idea Brothers. It's all my fault! <laughs> You can see underneath my desk. There's my leg. Uh, okay. <laughs> Get some porno music going next time I do that. Uh, you know, first of all, it, it is this is very unprecedented. You you make a movie for uh, thirty thousand dollars, complete unknown, and now you're on the cover of Newsweek. That's got to feel very strange. It is very strange indeed. Yes. And I was reading your bio today. It said you were in the Yankee farm system <laughs> for three years, the training system for the Yankees, the uh, farm team. Ah, this is the story. I, uh, we had this screening for the, for the film um, back in October of last year. Right. And it was kind of like, come down to Anthology Archives in New York, bring your family, bring your friends, we're going to watch the movie. Ooh, this is as far as it's going to get, you know? You thought like, like this movie, bio. Will, it'll yeah. be seen once. And, you know, you it'll know. be seen and maybe, maybe possibly get on video or whatever, but they said write a bio for you know, the people who are coming to see it. And they said, maybe we'll have some investors there or whatever. I said, oh, great, you know. So I just kind of goofily wrote that I was on the farm system for the Yankees because I love the Yankees. I figured my friends would get a kick out of it. So last week, I'm sitting in L.A. in this hotel room, and I open up Variety magazine, and there I am playing for the New York Yankee farm system. I go, oh, oh, geez. <laughs> Great, it's just that now it's in the magazines and stuff. <laughs> it's like, you can lie, it's easy. Now, now let's address, one of the biggest controversies about the film when it came out was everybody thought this was real. This was real footage that was yeah. found of these kids that were lost looking for the Blair Witch. How, are you meeting people who think it's real? People still think it's real to this day. Um, my Uncle Louie, uh, last weekend was telling me, he's a, a cop with the, uh, with the Yonkers TV. Mm -hmm. And his partner, I mean, he's my uncle, you know? He sees me once a week, you know? Right. His partner is emphatic about, you're lying to me, these kids are dead, you know? He's like, <laughs> <laughs> you know? <laughs> you should just go meet him someday, and he'd be like, thank God, yeah, you're yeah, alive! Yeah, exactly. Um, oh, it's not you, it's, not, it's your twin brother or something. <laughs> <laughs> you were, uh, to shoot this movie, there was a lot of uh, cinema verite here. They, they, you were secluded in the woods, you and the other yeah. two actors. Yeah. You were, the, the director, the people making the film were not in real direct contact with you while you were in the woods, is that right? They were in contact with us through, um, well, what we had was a global positioning system. It's like a satellite system. Right. And they had pre-programmed waypoints in there for, like, a couple of weeks before the actors got down there, before we got down there. They had had, the, you know, like, deter like uh, destinations that we would come across and program them in. So once we're out in the woods by ourselves, we program in, like, we're at waypoint two, we program in waypoint three. And it says 2.3 kilometers away, you know, northeast. You look at the compass and you start to hike northeast. And the, this thing goes down and down and down until you're finally there. When you get there, there's either, you know, wh whether it's bundles of sticks hanging from the trees as stick men or there's a, a cemetery. Um, but at every waypoint, after we did what we had to do, after we did a scene that was requested of us, there'd be a milk crate. And in the milk crate would be three canisters, film canisters. And they'd have Josh, Mike, and Heather. They'd have each of our names on them. And inside were notes. And these were the directing notes. They're sort of like, this is where, what your character is going through right now. This is what right. we want to see right now. And these notes would, like, 
I couldn't show Heather my note. We couldn't show each other the notes. See, this helped fuel the paranoia. This helped. You guys probably yeah. really felt like you were lost. I mean, we were really secluded. So the only time you didn't feel like you you couldn't actually believe you were really lost is when you either saw them or or you know you actually got the milk crate with fresh batteries and some food. Right. But otherwise, it was very easy to imagine yourself in a situation because they had us completely secluded into the woods. That's exactly how this show is done, by the way. I'm sure. I never know. I noticed that. I never know what's going on. I'm waiting for my next directive from them. Uh, the um, what's so strange, and I don't think you mind talking about this. You're on this this week's issue of Newsweek. You're on the cover. You still have your job moving furniture. That's that's right correct. now. You're yes. you have a job moving furniture. Yes. And I, I actually would like to, to, I'm glad you brought that up, because I'd like to say hello to the boys at McAvey Moving Company in Thornwood, New York. Uh -huh. And uh, Eugene and Brian, thanks for the uh, bad back, thanks for the bad knees, thanks for all the fun we had, but it's official, I quit! <laughs> And the other one just called me today and he says, so are you done? Yeah. I said, just watch Conan tonight. Yeah, and he's like, I don't want to stay up and watch that. <laughs> I hate that guy. Well, uh, like I have to tell anybody, the Blair Witch Project, which is a phenomenon, is in theaters now. And Michael, you seem like a, a really nice guy. It couldn't, Thank we're you just happy much. for you. This is very Thank cool. You. Couldn't have a nicer you. guy. Michael C. Williams, everybody. I'll be right back. Gene Pompa coming up. We'll see you in a minute.